Hey folks, welcome back to Hunter Proof Official. Last time you saw us, we were working on pulling out the mangled B18 B1 uh, and started prepping a B20 VTEC. Now in the process of doing that, we have removed everything from the bay and decided that maybe uh, we would hit it with a fresh coat of paint. And we also decided that we were gonna delete ABS in the process. Now currently we are working on uh, prepping the subframe and get it hit with a fresh coat of paint. And then once we get it bolted back in, we will run our hard lines for our new brake lines. So we've got the subframe painted, uh, we've got the steering rack freshened up, we're going to go ahead and start the reassembly, and we've actually got some goodies to install before we do so, and uh, Nate's going to tell you a little bit about that. Alright, so uh, we ordered from Rock Auto, we've got a few little goodies for this, uh, we've got some new fresh outer tie rods, and then we also got some inner tie rods, and some nice new bellows for this. We're going to go ahead and uh, install those parts and we're going to get the steering rack mounted up with the Hunter Proof Hardware Steering Rack Installation Kit. Uh, this is available on our website if you guys want to purchase this for your build. Also, uh, the tie bar, we've got uh, brand new hardware billet washers for it as well. subframe installed, the bolts tightened up, we we're ready to start prepping the bay, uh, running the hard lines for the ABS delete, and here we go. Alright guys, so we've got this B20 VTEC here, we've got it prepped, we've got it painted, uh, we took a minute just to clean off the intake and the exhaust manifold ports, uh, and then we actually went a step further and took a tap and actually chased the threads just to get rid of any junk that might still be in there. And it's really going to make installing these parts a breeze. So Nate, why don't you tell us about what we're going to be putting on this B20 V today? Absolutely. So uh, for starters, we got a Skunk 2 Pro Series intake manifold with a 70 millimeter throttle body, uh, an MPC Motorsport fuel rail. All of it is dressed up with Hunter Proof hardware. Um, we've got adjustable cam gears to go along with a lightweight crank pulley. And then to hold down the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold, we got some extended studs, also Hunter Proof hardware. All right, nice. Well, let's get to it. Sometimes blurred in your jeep so your peeps can stare 
got the rhyme We don't rhyme, rhyme, rhyme everyday hologram Even when ribs is touching, never swallow the ham You'd rather eat a sand sandwich salad It might need salt like your man's bland bad A lot of stuff happens that the news won't tell you Blues on L2, snooze all hell loose Break it, take it like the good, the bad, the ugly Break it, break your own hood in the caddy buggy Butter, softy, leather, floss and fatty juggy Always threw me off when she told me daddy fuck me I'm like any who's Seems walking all out in the street without any shoes I guess it's better than some funky socks You need to get her some skips before she gets the monkey box she wanna hear the beatbox, take pills and make fake quills the sheep box. Sing it. Alright, so as we're rolling through the assembly here and getting a lot of these parts put on, uh, we did notice there was a little bit of a problem here. Uh, we're using this Skunk 2 intake manifold. It's a Pro Series, which uh, awesome piece by the way. Uh, we're coupling it with a 70mm throttle body. Now, uh, this is a beautiful uh, machine throttle body man this thing works great it seals up good uh, the performance is, is great but we did have an issue with our TPS and it m must just not be compatible with this unit um, the part of the TPS here as you can see kind of bottoms out against the uh, trigger wheel inside the throttle body yeah so instead of you know looking around trying to source together a new TPS one that might be compatible we're actually uh, just going to head on over to the shop and see what we can fab up as far as like a small spacer goes. Because there's only a small 16th inch of a gap, so we should be able to fill it pretty easily. So we're gonna go ahead and test fit this new spacer that we made. And we are gonna go ahead and put the gasket on as well. And then try to go ahead and bolt this up. All goes well, she should bolt right up and be able to hold the TPS in and it should function properly. So as you can see here, we have the TPS now bolted up with our freshly made spacer and everything seems to be spinning and functioning properly as far as the butterfly valve inside the throttle body goes. Uh, as soon as we get the motor dropped in and the wiring hooked up, we will calibrate the TPS. Alright, so we've got the engine in time. Uh, Nate is preparing the flywheel. We've got a new clutch with some ARP bolts. Uh, and then of course we'll be installing the transmission and the starter uh, and the alternator with our 100 proof hardware. As you guys can see, the motor is complete. We've got the electronics on. Uh, Nate is routing the wire harness. And once we get that back on, we can add a couple of wires for VTEC. So we're not gonna go too crazy doing a tucked harness or anything like that, but we don't wanna distract from this really nice Pro Series manifold. So a really easy thing that uh, you can do, and, and we decided to do, was uh, add some fresh loom to this harness. And as you can see, instead of routing the injectors up and over the fuel rail and over the intake, uh, we've just got the injectors in pairs 
coming through the intake runners. All right, so now over to the VTEC solenoid. Now we're not running a knock sensor, so we're not gonna have to worry about that, but we're actually having to wire in the pressure switch and uh, the actual VTEC solenoid itself. So as you can see, we've got it going with the factory loom all the way down, and it's actually gonna come out down here where the factory plugs are. Now we've got another four pin connector that we snagged off a uh, junk harness and we're gonna put a brake in it similar to uh, the OEM plugs here. So when we go to pull this motor again, we have to service something. Uh, it's not gonna be hardwired in and it's gonna be a quick and easy unplug uh, just like they would have done from the factory. So this side of the harness is pretty much done. It's all loomed up. Uh, you know, we've got our yellow wire that we added uh, for our VTEC pressure switch. Uh, the other side of that switch is going to ground up here on the thermostat. Uh, and then when, of course, we've got our red wire down here for our VTEC solenoid and it will run into the car on the other side of this plug and we will pin those two wires into the ECU. All right, guys, so now we're on to the chassis side of the wiring. Now you can see on the ECU plug, we have took a flathead screwdriver and, and popped this little clip up. And that's gonna allow us to insert these pins that we've pulled from a junk harness. Now the other side of these pins, we're just gonna follow the harness out the firewall grommet, and then we're gonna solder them to the plug that's gonna connect to the engine harness. So since this car is OBD2A, uh, we're actually gonna use connector C, slot number 15, and these are always numbered from this side with a connector clip up. Uh, so C15 is gonna be our pressure switch. So we're just gonna insert that guy in there until we hear a click, like so. And then connector A, slot number eight, is for our actual VTEC solenoid wire itself. There's our click. We're good to shut these, we're good to go. Okay. All right guys, so as you can see here, we've got the plug added. Uh, these wires are soldered and heat shrinked. Uh, and then of course, we've got a couple extra wires on the bottom of this four pin plug. Uh, if we ever need to add anything else, We've already got a plug in here that we can easily do so. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and start relooming this harness. We're gonna put the fuse box back in and uh, this side of the car wiring should be good to go.
right guys, so we've got the master cylinder bolted up. We've got the prop valve uh, just mounted up in place. We've got one bolt there on the bottom. Uh, and then we've started running our hard lines. Now, there are tons of soft line kits you can do, braided line, all that really nice stuff. But honestly, if you've got some hard line laying around, uh, this is a really, not a tough project to do. It's actually kind of fun once you start getting into it. Uh, but the last couple things we've got to do is cut these guys off and mount these two rear brake lines up here in the bottom of the prop valve there. So let's get started. All right guys, so the swap is complete and uh, we are really excited because it is about time to drop this motor in. Yeah, I mean, we've got uh, ABS deleted, a bunch of brake lines ran. Uh, we've uh, gone through, painted the bay, really done all the wiring and re-loomed everything. So next week when you guys tune in, hopefully this motor will be dropped in and we'll be uh, scooting on down the road with it.